down whoa that's a little too low there uh yo hey what's up everybody this is francisco andrew and charles once again for another edition of sports goofs and uh welcome everybody it's 53 i don't know any famous 53s in sports but uh bobby abreu maybe did he wear up number 53 he might have i guess player we can remember to forget uh, hey, and, hey, he's a legend. <laughs> anyway, for the show. For that home run derby, yeah. Uh, anyway, for the show today, folks, uh, we have uh, WWE Day of Reckoning 2 on in the background. Oof, Bobby Abreu did wear number 53. Nice. Yeah, Day of Reckoning 2 for the Nintendo GameCube. And uh, let's see, we've got a, uh, I'll set up, actually, before we start, I want to set up a computer match in the background. But Charles, you get to choose who, who's so playing. So let's see who's on this roster. So Day of Reckoning 2, when was this? It was a like GameCube exclusive. I think it was 2007? Uh, maybe. Well, let's see. Let's see the, let's take a look at the roster here. So we'll do just a normal. No, 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 actually, no, 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 no. You got to go. F- okay, go ahead. Choose, choose the match, uh, Andrew. Hmm. Charles, what is an Iron Man match? So basically, an Iron Man match is whoever gets the most pinfalls during the match wins, and they can be for a set period of time. Mostly known for the excellent, I think, WrestleMania 12. Oh, is that the one where Brett Cena the and, and, and uh, Shawn Michaels. Orton beat the crap out of each other? That's another one, too, yes. <laughs> uh, why don't, let's do a steel cage match. What the hell? All right, so let's, let's have some fun there. Raw or SmackDown, doesn't matter, right? Smackdown. Yeah, no, yeah. All right, Smackdown. All right, Charles. Let's see the. Hold on, let's put that. Let's see the roster. We got Batista, Big Show, uh, Booker T, Carlito. All right. So, hmm. Chavo- let's see the first. The first rule about Chavo. cage matches, as you're looking through and I'm seeing, is that you want to make it a good blood feud. You don't just put basic guys in there. <laughs> Whoa, we don't mention that guy's name anymore. Uh. For those who don't know, Chris Benoit has been blacklisted from the WWE. Mm. Really? Why? Do you know? Uh, let's not talk oh, about a... that. Oh, really? I'll, I'll tell mm-hmm. you after the show. Oh, okay. Never, I thought that was Learn a Goof session right there. <laughs> it, or, it is, but it's it Learn a Goof. But it's, it's not for a Sports Goofs <laughs> Dark session. <laughs> it's sports Goofs after dark, baby. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Only after midnight. All right. So we'll do. I saw Russia, JBL. Yeah. We're going to pop JBL in there. Okay. Because I'm going to relive a feud he actually had. All right, so let's uh, blah, 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 JBL, John Cena, Kane. Let's keep going there. Hmm. Let's see. Go further down. Wow, Kenzo Suzuki. Wrestler, I remember, forget. <laughs> <laughs> we should we should do a wrestler to forget every now and then. I, I, we can I mean, actually listen, put in that, that, in that segment. That, that, I, I don't have, have one ready for this journey. episode, so we could do that. Let's do that. All right. And in honor of this man's birthday, even though I was going to go for a feud, we're going to go Ric Flair. Really? Okay. Today is his first birthday. All right. Actually, let's switch up. No JBL. Okay. I definitely want Ric Flair because I saw some names. Okay. No JBL. So Ric Flair on one side. All right. Let's 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 keep going down past Ric Flair. Uh, you, you changed oh. Rey Mysterio. There we go. Okay. So Rey Mysterio, Rob Van Dam. Keep going. Shawn Michaels, Shelton Benjamin, okay. Snitsky. Okay. Eugene Tisney, a wrestler we remember, forget for sure. The Hurricanes uh, the for hurricane. Tel- Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Triple H, Undertaker, William Regal, and then we get. The then we're into the. All right, so we're gonna go. Games. We're gonna do Shawn Michaels, because Shawn Michaels is the man who retired Ric Flair from WWE ah, in good reaction. One. Okay. So it only feels appropriate that we do this. Not thirty minutes. Yeah, we'll, yeah, thirty minutes. Let's do thirty minutes because it's going to be playing in the yeah. background. 
So let's... and it could be done. It could be done shorter, probably. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna have that in the background. However, we would like to, uh, I guess, start with the NHL because some fun things have happened. NHL trade deadline. We'll get to that, but. We would like to start with our a plan. We've had this plan for like the last two weeks, goalie discussion, because we wanted to learn a goof, Charles, here on some more uh, Canadian hockey action here. But something happened this weekend that kind of turned, that not made that a necessity to do the goalie learn a goof this week, and that is David Ayers. So uh, if you guys remember on our Facebook chat, I, in all capital letters, screamed at you guys that an emergency goalie is coming into the game for the Hurricanes. I was actually at an FIU baseball game when that text came, when that message came in, and immediately I forgot all about the FIU <laughs> game. Immediately found a stream on my phone. Uh, I think it was the the uh sports na- uh, not sports sportsnet na- sportsnet stream mm-hmm. and uh started watching of course i didn't get a chance to see him actually do awesome i only saw the two goals that he let in yeah the, okay so and by the way sp- speaking of college baseball there was a good series between the canes and the and the gators boo uh because their number one are the canes and number two are the gators in college baseball and that just happened this past weekend so it was actually sold out crowd for all three games here in Miami. So baseball can work down here, by the way. <laughs> and our Lord and Savior, and we'll get to that in the second half of the show, our Lord and Savior in front of the show, Derek Jeter, is going to make <coughs> things happen down here. Uh, anyways, uh, Andrew is looking at the TV screen and having <laughs> a very good time with this wrestling video game from 2006 or whatever. I'm not even sure. <laughs> um Shawn Michaels is all like grinding on the on the rope there. <laughs> He's just a sexy boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right, getting back to this. So David Ayers uh, gets into the game as the em- emergency backup goalie for the Carolina Hurricanes in Toronto facing the Maple Leafs. But we have to explain why, well, aside from the fact that it's an emergency backup goalie, why it is so interesting okay so charles the nhl is weird if you haven't noticed like they do funny canadian things and we love them for that so the nhl has certain instances where any old random schmo can dictate the outcome of a game you can have an, any old random schmo be a referee there is a rule for that and if you, on sp nation there's a weird rules episode about it and any schmo could potentially be the backup goalie of an NHL team. So what happened here was the Carolina Hurricanes, uh, two goalies, uh, th- their backup goalie is supposed to play that night. So this was the second night of back-to-back uh, game uh, road trip for the Hurricanes. So they were in Toronto facing the Maple Leafs. Their number one starter, um, Mrazek, he was going for the Canes. Um, and because their backup goalie, their normal backup goalie, was injured, they had to use an emergency backup goalie to come in because there was not enough time for them to bring up uh, a goalie from their American Hockey League minor league team. So David Ayers, who I, I found this out, he's not the Zamboni driver for the Toronto Marbles. He used to be. He's currently the operations manager for the Maple Leaf Garden, which is the Leafs' old home, and where I think uh, a university hockey team plays now. So he manages the ice rink over there. But uh, he's done back, he's done like practice sessions with the Toronto Marlies, which is the Maple Leafs minor league team. He's done some with the Maple Leafs themselves, but it's been a while. So uh, he, he's the backup goalie for that night. And somebody from the Leafs comes up to him and is like, hey, you're going to have to suit up because uh, uh, the, the, there's no other goalie for the Hurricanes. He's like, okay. So he's the backup goalie for both teams, by the way, uh, just in case. So he suits up, and he's on the bench. Well, we, we also need to explain just a bit about the backup rule. Okay. So every National Hockey League arena needs to have present 
one person who will serve as the emergency backup goalie, or e-bug, as it is abbreviated. This person will serve as the backup goalie in case either team is out of goalies due to injury or what have you. Uh, so he could have been for the road team or for the home team, regardless. In this case, for the road team, the Carolina Hurricanes. But the the big thing about this was that he came into like he came into the game, and not only did he come into the game, he came into the game with more than half the game left to go. Now, Andrew, the history of emergency backup goalies getting into the game is very actually very recently that it's started to happen but there's only been three now in nhl history uh well i know one of them was got so, something right the first one was the i guess the equipment manager or somebody for the carolina hurricanes mm. and he actually got into the game for like the last minute of like a blowout game that they were losing but they just let him have his moment right to actually become an official national hockey league player but then in 2018 was Scott Foster for the Chicago Blackhawks. Was it 2018? I thought it was earlier. It, no, 2018. Okay. At least the 2017-18 season at least. Gotcha. And so Scott Foster uh, got into the last 10 minutes of the third period of a 6-2 to two game between the Blackhawks and the Winnipeg Jets, and he went perfect. He, he pitched a shutout, essentially. Uh, he, he had seven saves. And preserved the lead for the Blackhawks, and he was the first star of the game. But this, this was a goalie, a emergency backup goalie, a Joe Schmo, who's 42 years old. 42 years old, who comes into the game with more than half the game left, meaning he is going to be the attorney. The uh, I was going to say attorney of record. Gosh darn it. <laughs> 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 Stupid work. Uh, the goalie of record. And his name would be tied to whatever the outcome of the game would be. And, Andrew, you uh, you said that you were at the FIU game. It didn't start off so well, did it? Nah, he he let in. Well, one of them I can't really blame. I know one, uh, yeah. Pat McAfee said that he too let in two eh goals. One of them I can't really fault him for right. because one of the guys was injured and was useless, basically. Right. He was, like, holding his wrist. He got injured. Um, so I, it was I, a five on four, so you can't really fault him. Exactly. You can't, you can't even really fault a normal uh, – uh, normal – a professional making millions of dollars goalie for that sort of situation, let alone a 42 year old who hasn't played in like ever. Um, At least not in a professional sense. Right. Um, the other one, he came really close to stopping. Right. It just, it slipped right under, it slipped right under his, his pad. Yeah. So, but because at that point the Canes went up, it was four to one, uh, because he came into the game and it was three to one. Canes got a goal, but then he gave up two goals on the first two shots that he saw, and then luckily, uh, the 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 period ended, and so they go into the to, to the second intermission into the locker room. He's like the players are trying to cheer him up, tell him, "Hey, it's okay, you know, have fun with this. This is your moment." And just just go out there and play. And he promised the guys like, like I'll settle down. Don't worry, you know. I'm just I'll just, I'll settle down. And he comes out. It's four to three into the third period. And I'll tell you this: the Carolina Hurricanes, they absolutely hit another gear. Those bunch of jerks, <laughs> fan. Like they hit another gear defensively and offensively. Like they were playing for him. Exactly. Like, They're like we're not going to let this guy down. So they would intercept any pass the Leafs would do. They were smothering the Leafs on defense at the blue line. They only allowed eight shots on net for that period. Ridiculous. It's, it's pretty darn low. Uh, you get probably on average 30... 35 shots per game. That's pretty much a good night for 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 a, for a team offensively. So you can expect like 10 to 12 shots a period. Exactly. So the the Canes 
made him see less than double digits of shots and he saved all of them so the shots that he did see he actually stopped them the leafs completely and the leafs have been doing bad as of late really bad both them and the florida panthers I don't want to get into it, but <laughs> neither of them wants that last playoff spot in their division. Either way, they are doing awful. And this is fantastic for everybody that hates the Leafs, which is mostly everybody, uh, with regards to losing this game. Anyways, the Canes score two more goals. Game ends 6-3. to three. David Ayers is a freaking hero now. And... The significance of this, so his wife came to the game because, hey, my husband's going to actually be backing up in this game. Usually the backup goalie, especially if both goalies are healthy, they're like sitting in a press box. Just, you know, they have their equipment, but they're not down there. They're not even suited up. But here he actually had to suit up and sit on the bench. I mean, like Francisco mentioned, there have only been three e-bug usages in probably what close to five or six years since this became a man yeah since the rule became mandated so it's like a probably it's i can guarantee it's less than a one percent chance right or one percent of games that an e-bug would come in it's very rare especially for because usually if one goaltender does go down between uh um between games at least they'll call up their goalie from the, the the minor league team to, to fill in, especially if the minor league team is pretty close. But in this case, um, I don't know who the Canes minor league affiliate is. I think it's the Char- Charlotte Checkers. The Charlotte Checkers. So that's far away from Toronto. And so the um, – so he he's a hero. And the, it was so funny watching him because he had the Canes jersey – on but his pads and his <laughs> his his uh, actual hockey pants and his and helmet his mask his mask exactly were all maple leafs colors and his had like the toronto marley's logo on the mask so he was not matching at all in fact they made him change his pants at least entering the third period to at least have the red pants and that might have been what what had done it maybe the, <laughs> maybe the Leafs looked at him wearing blue and it was like oh this is just like practice and then he put on the red he's like holy crap he looks like a professional goalie now and so his wife goes to the game and his wife on Twitter when he he's has to come into the game she she writes F me <laughs> in capital letters and, you know, afterwards, she's ecstatic. She's like, I, I got to see, like, my, my human, my favorite human in the world live out his ultimate dream. And that's touching. And there's the other thing. He's a kidney transplant uh, sur- survivor, I guess. A while ago, not, not recent. 2004 is when he had it. And he thought he, was not, he wasn't going to play hockey again. Because he, you know, you got to be really careful with that. But he's worked his way through to at least be a a practice goalie and such. And and look at this, he makes it to the NHL. He got credited with the win, so he is the first ever. Because Scott Foster didn't get credit for the win, he's the first ever backup goalie to get a victory in the <laughs> NHL. He's also because he's 42 years old, the oldest player to. Uh, his victory, uh, was he, he was the oldest player to ever get his first victory or whatever <laughs> at that age, whatever. The oldest victory, I guess, whatever, what have you. Or the oldest rookie, if you could say, too. Rookie goaltender. Um, he did, He actually didn't get paid for it. He's supposed to get paid 500 bucks, but... Rip uh, off. Something. <clears throat> yeah. Or but... Like 500 funny Canadian dollars. But let me let me say this, though. The Carolina Hurricanes, ever the very, I don't know what the word is, but... Classy? Not so, class. Uh, savvy? Yeah, savvy. Ever the savvy business franchise. Basically, like, the second that the game was over, they instantly released a t-shirt. A shirtsy. A shirt, a shirtsy. Uh, or shirtsy. With the the away look, you know, white shirt with the the, the canes, canes, and then his name and number on the back. Yeah. And you know, as soon as they saw that, first everyone was like, "Oh my God, I need this!" I think they've had over three thousand orders um, since Saturday. Right. 
And then immediately after that, they were everyone was saying, please give the proceeds, the royalties to this guy. Well, well actually, they and they, they came up to him to ask him about it. And they, they're ending up splitting it between him and a kidney foundation. Right. He actually, Yeah, kidney foundation. I think another charity somewhere in the Raleigh, uh, North Carolina area. Which, so, like, kudos to him, kudos right. to the Hurricanes, because, you know, he's no millionaire or anything like these guys. Right. But he, they, they've treated him like, I don't know, he's Carolina royalty. Now. Right. You know, he's, he's getting treated better than Cam Newton at this point. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I want the Lightning so bad to win the Cup, but if they don't, the Hurricanes need to win and the Cup. And he needs to get a ring. And he, he needs, needs to get a, to get a he ring. He needs to get a ring. That. I know he's not going to get his name on the cup, but he needs to get a ring at least because he got one victory, um, and that's two points. And especially... Although I would love it if the Hurricanes could somehow find like a loophole or whatever to get him on. Well, I think I think uh, there is some. I think there's like like you can have one extra person there as an exception to the normal rules to get your name on the cup, like the owner, general manager, and stuff. So I think Dale Talon is on the Blackhawks Stanley Cup team, even though he wasn't on the team at that point. Right. They still put his name there because he basically drafted and built that team. Mm-hmm. So he got his name on the cup for that exception. So like, maybe. If maybe. they if they end up steamrolling the rest of the Eastern Conference all the way to the Stanley Cup finals, he needs to be on the Stanley Cup. I'm telling you right now. Or he at least needs to drop the first puck or something in game yeah. one. Yeah, Dundon, Dundon, you kill the AAF in part. Please make it right and put. I, it's more complicated than that. <laughs> and now there's AAF fans who are like getting beef with XFL fans right now, <laughs> which is so ridiculous. But Dundon put his name on the cup. He yeah. needs to be there. So um, he. So now David Ayers is on this publicity tour. He's been on Colbert, Stephen Colbert. He's been talking to Dan Lebatard, Dan Patrick. Uh, it's, uh, he's been on, of course, all over Canadian uh, television, TSN, and all that stuff. He was on Good Morning America, uh, I think today, or on Today, whatever. Um, and yeah, he's been on Colbert. And he, I mean, he's just, he's living the dream. His goalie stick, by the way, is now in the Hockey Hall of Fame. That's, that's an earth. So now he's in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> you see, that is so amazing. If you look on a hockey reference right now, look up David Ayers. There it is. One and oh. <laughs> one and oh. There he is with his uh, Safers. He's officially a National Hockey League player at least one time in his life. And which is like it's it's every kid's dream, let's be honest. To tell yeah, to make it into professional sport. I mean, gosh darn it. I mean, we feel good for even covering the sports that we do as media, you know? Um, like just like being around that thing. Imagine actually getting into it. By like I, we were, the three of us were getting awestruck. on the ice at the Panthers game. Uh, like the three it. of us, the three of us were <laughs> awestruck when we got to go on the uh, go on the ice at the BB and T Center. Exactly, and, and putting I could, on a show for the masses. I couldn't even imagine <laughs> what it would be like to be on the uh, not just on the ice playing. More than ha- playing any amount of time, and yeah. then to end up playing half the game, more than half the game, getting the win, it's like that's something that deserves to be a thirty for thirty. I, I, okay, so, or at least one of those mini short ones that they've been making lately. Um, okay, Mar- okay, uh, clown missioner Rob Manfred of Major League Baseball. Here's an idea: you want to get fans into the game, don't change the playoff format. Punish the Astros. Do that at least. Uh, <laughs> take away that championship. But here's another thing: have have something like the e bug. I don't know. Okay, like you know how some major league baseball games, you know, go into extra innings and they start running out of players. How about have like ten designated fans? Just choose oh, ten <laughs> random fans that stick around for that game. And if they if they are out of pitchers. Okay, we're just gonna have to get some people from the crowd. They they should do that. Okay, um, the NFL. 
if you run out of kickers because there's only really two kickers on the team, you have to you have to have an uh, was it an e buck or what have you, an emergency backup kicker. Have that or an emergency backup quarterback. <laughs> that would be so fun. Ah. <laughs> uh, I mean, to be fair, I'm pretty sure the three of us can kind of throw better than at least one or two. Granted, I can't see over those linemen. Uh, unless I'm Baker Mayfield being uh, called uh, a effing midget. But I feel like the emergency backup kicker would be funnier. Because, you know, people oh, yeah. are always so critical on the kickers. Okay, let's see how easy it is for you guys and just have random fans <laughs> suiting up and trying to make it through the uprights. All right, hit it 50 yards. Let's see what you got. Um... So yeah, uh, Rob Manfred, just start pulling people from the crowd at like 16th inning, White Sox versus Orioles. There's 10 people watching the game anyways. Uh, just they, they run out of pitchers. They run out of position players. Go for it. Go ahead. Um, or here's the caveat. The National League doesn't have the designated hitter. Just have a random fan be the designated <laughs> hitter now. Just one random fan. Anybody. They have to be 18 years or older, male or female. Get into the game right there. <laughs> and they actually might do better than a pitcher at least. Or at least it would be more interesting than a pitcher hitting. Um, so that's the so that's David Ayers. We, we're, we've said enough about it. I mean, you can just go watch it. He's having his media tour. It's one of the most wholesome stories. I, I, I'm assuming it's going to be like at the ESPYs, uh, that, that type of thing. And yeah, so... And the cage match between uh, David Ayers and Scott Foster in the future. Please. <laughs> well, I, I posted this in uh, in our chat um, that – who was it, Charles? Which one? We had a few. The, the, the chat's kind of – The wrestler? Uh, hold on. Come on. Uh, Kevin Owens. Oh, KO. Yes, yes. I saw his tweet. Yeah. Um, Kevin he Owens. He's partner. gonna be up in Toronto for a show, and he said a couple of weeks. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that would be perfect to to bring him because he said he has to do a tag team match, mm-hmm. and he kind of hinted that right. his partner may not be well enough to do it. <laughs> um, well, ironically. That partner got suspended for a wellness violation. So, <laughs> but listen, I'll, I'll tell you now, Vince McMahon loves that cross brand propriety. Yeah. So that would know. be perfect. He's yeah, on especially it. in Canada. It, in yeah, Toronto. But also, Vince is happened. hated in Canada. I mean, it's though. probably at uh, Scotia Bank Arena now, not Air Canada Center. But yeah. That yeah, would be remember, perfect. Vince is not person non grata in, in Toronto, though. I'll give you guys a learner goof of why. Or mm, Canada itself. Mm, okay. Oh, boy. Well, yeah. speaking of learner goof. It, this is the goalie centric episode. So we shall. So we've covered the emergency backup goalie. And let's, uh, let's move forward. So I'm going to take like a little bit of the lead on this because I'm the goalie fan of. What is Ric Flair doing? Anyway, uh, <laughs> he was like on his knees begging or something. Um, that's called a heel move. Okay, he's kind of being a cowardly heel. Don't worry, I will educate him. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> he, honestly, we should just have him doing play-by-play of this match, like we're like we're watching an actual episode. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> so don't give me hope. Anyway, um, so since I'm like a big goalie aficionado. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of lead on this segment, but Francisco is going to be like just as much as well. So anyway, a little bit of a history, learn a goof of NHL goaltenders. Uh, they used to have like very little padding. They wore like cricket pads or whatever. Um, very minimal uh, protection and no masks, obviously. Uh, first right. goaltender. To, you took it to the face like a man. Right. Um, first. Uh, oh, sweet chin music. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so first, uh, first goalie to use a mask of any sort 
was Clint Benedict in 1930 for the Montreal Maroons. No relation to the Canadians. There used to be two teams in Montreal. Um, he only used it for a couple of games, and it was just like a little leather thing that... Yeah, I'll, I'm going to put it on the search screen just so you guys can, can see it for yourself. Uh, Jock Plants gives me nightmares, by the yeah. way. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Um, speaking of Jacques Plante, uh, he was a goaltender for the Montreal Canadiens in the 50s and 60s. He was the first goaltender to regularly use a mask. Right. Um, on no- he used it in practice a little bit, but his coach didn't want him to wear it that much because he thought it would impair his vision. Uh, but on November 1st, 1959, he was facing the New York Rangers and took a shot to the face. I think it like broke his nose or something. Yeah. And he was like, screw it in, in the intermission or whatever. He basically told the head coach, if you don't let me wear this, I'm not going back out there. So the coach had no choice, but to let him wear it. And so he did. And that started it all. It was a little fiberglass thing that you might see out of a horror movie. Basically what inspired it (laughs) for uh, Jason. So yeah. Um, Jason Voorhees. Um, looks like Hannibal Lecter. What the hell is that, you guys? Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, that's Jock Plant right there, Hockey Hall of Famer, and the yeah, Notorious Serial Killer. Oh yeah, oh yeah, he's uh, uh, it's not like Eve Online where you can just feel safe. You know? <laughs> yeah, but you know the best single player MMO out there. But uh, <laughs> Jock does not play a single player. No. If he beats you in a fight, he wears your skin the next day. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what it looks like, but yeah. So anyway, um, it evolved a little bit in the next couple of years. The first goaltender, you can actually see it there. Uh, Gary Cheevers was the first goaltender to actually put design on his mask. Uh, in this it was case, very clever, by the way. It was way. very clever. He made little, it looked like little stitches. Um, and that's wherever a puck hit him in the mask. Um, which, like, bravo to him. And some of the other masks in history are absolutely ridiculous. I forget some of their names. Uh, but one had, like, a tiger mask. Oh, so, okay, so I'm putting up this, uh, USA Hockey Magazine, uh, article So you can see there, that's the mask that Clint Benedict wore. Right, but the first one was worn by a woman. Really? Yeah, 1927. Queen's University goaltender Elizabeth Graham wore a fencing mask to protect her teeth. Hmm. So there you go. Well, there the you more go. you know. Learn a goof. Exactly. Even the learn a goofs learn a goof. Um, so yeah, there's Jacques Plante. And then there's, yeah, Gary Cheevers with his... his uh, uh, th- that's a fantastic... That is a great mask. idea. And uh, in recent years when... It was Boston, right? Yeah, he was in Boston. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Boston was in the Winter Classic, their, one of their goaltenders had a mask made that resembled a, f- a head. You know, it had like ears painted on and everything. It was his. It was his head, Gary Cheever's head. Yeah. Right, um, and then it had the looked like a mask with those uh, the marks on it and whatever. Yeah, and just. If you see how many <laughs> marks there are on his mask, it makes you realize that those guys were insane. Um, although shots back then were not as hard as they are now. But if still. It, right, I know. But if you were to take a Zidane Chara slap shot to the face, no. you would be dead. No. I mean, guys, it's like wearing helmets in baseball. It's like catchers. Catch, I mean, heck, they didn't used to wear gloves starting out in the, in, back right. in the 1800s. Um, Took it like a man. I mean, they call them the tool, tools of ignorance for a reason. Right. Because everyone thought that you were uh, weak if you didn't wear, if you wore a mask or a uh, chest protector or uh, yeah. p- uh, knee. Any guard, sort of whatever. measure of safety, <laughs> right. really. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, let's fast forward a little bit. Where? What else should we discuss? I, I mean, guess, let's I mean, do the, the stances. There's there's some interesting tidbits here. The seventy two summit series, which is a, so, I mean, we have to cover that on its own. Because it would, that was uh, that was the USSR against uh, Canada, U- Canada, right? And, and the the difference is, it was the Canadian NHL players. 
So uh, mini sidetrack learner goof here. NHL never used to send their players to the Olympic tournament. So, and of course, the Soviet Union prevented their players from going to North America to play for the NHL. So the Summit Series was fantastic for this, but um, uh, the NHL didn't have, Olymp they didn't send their players to the Olympics until 1998. And now it's, it's hit and miss as to whether they're gonna send guys or not. And it's likely not at this point, but. And the thing was, the players the USSR were sending over were basically pros. Yeah, they were NHL quality players, so they would dominate the Olympics, which is why this past weekend, Miracle on Ice anniversary. 40th anniversary. Exactly, which is why that American team beating them, because it was just basically minor league level or amateur players playing for the USA team. And I actually saw someone put a clip of uh, David Ayers um, catching the puck as time expired. Yeah. And someone overlaid it with the audio of Al Michael saying, do you believe in miracles? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and I guess we can cover that some other time too. Especially, yeah. let's say when the Olympics, the Summer Olympics, we'll talk about the Winter okay. Olympics. <laughs> 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 well, we play Mario and Sonic at the Olympics during that time, so. Okay, anyways. Um, so anyway, um, three basic... I, I hope you're still following us, Charles. I am. Yeah. Jack Plant is a scary oh. man. If, hockey <laughs> hockey is its own little animal. Uh, 1974, uh, the last actual man to play as a goaltender in the, United, in the NHL was Andy Brown. Because he, he was the last one to use... Uh, to, to, that did not have a mask. Right. <laughs> So, and get masks have evolved since then. Uh, nowadays, they're the masks that you see. Yep. Um, Which baseball players have now adopted. Right. Um, I think it was like the mid to late 90s that they started. Oh, look who won. Woo! Ric Flair with the victory. Woo! All right. 56 seconds remaining. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it's scripted, not fake. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have to set up the next one. Uh, so exit. Oh, there's a story mode? Oh, no, we can't get into that. We can't get into that. We can't get it. We actually, we would have to do like a separate stream just for that. So. Ooh, the story mode, Rumble. if I remember correctly, is oh. someone's trying to get Stacy Keebler to be their girlfriend. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> Charles remembers this from back in the day. Okay, uh, let's see. Ta single, tag team, triple threat, fatal four-way, handicap, or royal rumble. Um, okay, so if we, since it is the road to WrestleMania, and since the Royal Rumble was like in January, you could always do that. However, let, let's put a little tag team action. In there. Okay, all right. So tag team. Uh, oh boy. Okay, Andrew, you choose this part. Tornado match. I don't even know what the heck that is. Um, no tagging. All four men going at it. Ooh. Kinky. I like that. I'm choosing that one for myself. Let's do, let's do Raw since we did SmackDown. Okay, last time. that's fine. We haven't unlocked all the other arenas. So, uh, all right. So now we have four to choose from, Charles. Who, who's the first one on this? On this, uh, this Bonus list points here. if you can get actual stables together. Okay, well, we, we could do this. I, it's going to be a bit, but let's see. All right. Keep on going. We on the Raw uh, brand, or is it everybody's on everybody. their brand? All right. So let's keep Batista. Well, we just had Ric Flair. So. Okay, so Batista will be our first yeah. one. Okay. All right. Keep on going. Keep on going. So who will he be partnering with? Let's see. Oh, it would be great if uh, Mankind... I don't think he's in this game. I don't think he's in it. No, he's not. All right, so Randy Orton, because they were in the stable called Evolution that had Ric Flair and Triple H in there. All righty. Oh, and just as a side learner goof for Francisco, stable is just a fancy term for a tag team. Okay, all right. It's a faction. It's a group. Um, 
So team and number see. two. Oh wait, weren't uh, Christian and Edge a tag team at one point? They were. Edge was also a tag team with Rey Mysterio as well. They were tag team champions. But let's put an Edge because Edge is now going to be feuding Randy Orton come WrestleMania. Ooh. And so we can do Edge and Christian. So we're, we'll we're doing like a though. like a simulation. <laughs> yep. Okay, Edge and who? Christian. Alrighty. Okay. And let's play. Okay. This puts this puts a great tear in my eye. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was the intermission. So Andrew, continue, please. Uh, we're going to goalie style play now. Correct. So there are three main goalie styles. Uh, you have the stand-up, which is basically extinct nowadays. Um, if you watch any sort of uh, footage from basically before the 1980s, um, any that's that's what goalies did. You would very rarely ever go to the ice. Right. Uh, it was very awkward. You would have to like flail, kick your legs out. Right. And, do whatever you could to try and stop the puck. It would be, it's, I, you know, it, it's kind of like, like if you put me in that, <laughs> <laughs> that's probably the style that I would play just to start out, just to deal with the equipment and everything. And the fact that I, I probably can't move too well and or get on the ground that fast. But yeah. Or like, imagine if you don't have any sort of pads mm -hmm. And, you know, you're going to the ice and you have no knee protection. Yeah. You're going to want to avoid going to the ice as much as possible. Exactly. I mean, that's not what their reason was it for. Reason for it was. It's just. But that's how it looks, basically. Right. Um, so you have the butterfly style, which uh, was actually, uh, much to my surprise, was not created by uh, Patrick Waugh. It was created by... Um, here, I had it for a second. Uh, Glenn Hall and Tony Esposito, who played oh, in the yeah. 50s and 60s and the 70s and 80s. And Hall of Famers. And yeah. Hall of Famers. Um, Butterfly is what you'll see a lot more now. Uh, goaltenders will go to the ice, um, take up as much space as they can. Uh, it's especially beneficial for really tall goaltenders, like, let's say, Ben Bishop, who's... Like six five or Andre Vasilevsky is huge. Andre Vasilevsky, well. Jacob Markstrom, out in Vancouver, because it covers more space laterally from side to side. Um, but the downside is you're not as tall. But if you're very tall human, then even being on your knees, you're still going to cover a lot of vertical space. Right. So oh wait, I forgot how big the net is now at this point because they've changed the size. Here, really. look that up, and I'll keep. Talking. Okay, go ahead. So, um, the advantage of butterfly is, like I said, you cover a lot of space, uh, width wise. And also a lot of shots tend to be lower. So that's an advantage and it's been very effective for a lot of goaltenders. Uh, kind of the big, I mean, it was pioneered by those two Hall and Esposito, but Patrick Waugh was kind of the one that really sort of took it to the next level. Um, the final one is called the hybrid. Um, so, uh, sorry, uh, just to interject here. So the NHL official net size is six feet wide by four feet high. And uh, with, I mean, um, it extends at least backwards 40 inches from front to back. So that's the size of the NHL. And they, they recently made it bigger, so mm -hmm. it used to be smaller. And, of course, they've made the goalie pads smaller, too, recently. Which I'm, as a goalie fan, I'm, I'm thoroughly against. It makes a hard job it's, even harder. It's all about putting more offense. I know. In the I mean, Rob Manfred, by the way, clown missioner, if you want to – you know, get people to watch baseball, have them all wear goalie pads. <laughs> <laughs> it might make the games more interesting. Oh, it might... too, because we're going to need it. Oh, yeah. Oh, the entire Astros team is going to need it. And we'll get to that. Except for the guys who weren't on the team. We are fair people. Anybody? We're not animals. Exactly. Whoever wasn't on the roster between 2017 and 2019, you're safe. Mm-hmm. 
Sorry, go ahead. So you were talking about the hybrid style. Right. Um, hybrid style is, as you can imagine, it's kind of a mixture of stand-up and butterfly. Uh, it's sort of a best of both worlds because if the shot is high, you can stand up and save it. Uh, it requires a bit more, I don't know, analysis and thinking because butterfly goalies will generally just always go to the, always go to the ice. Uh, but uh, hybrid, they're a little more picky and choosy of what style they'll use. Um, I don't know. Would you anything to add to the hybrid section? Would you say? No, I mean, I kind of like would like to talk about some of the significant goalies now i mean or over time like just the i mean we can go down a list of just hall of famers right and we could start i mean you have uh the guy with the most wins in nhl history martin brodeur who was a hybrid right who played for new jersey devils and weirdly ended his career in st louis with the blues but you know that's kind of that's like joe montana on the kansas city chiefs Mm -hmm. type of or, or willie mays on the new york mets Kind of a weird stop for him at the end. Um, and then you've got Patrick Waugh, Montreal Canadiens, and Colorado Avalanche. Of course, his exit from Montreal is the most one of the most interesting parts of his story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Learn to goof here. Patrick Waugh uh, was very was uh, maybe like Nolan Arenado, just a little disgruntled with his team uh, in 1995. Five. So uh, it was 95-96 season. He was, at that point, he had already won Stanley Cups with the Montreal Canadiens. Most recent was in 93. And Which, coincidentally enough, is the last time a Canadian team has won the Stanley Cup. Right. And so... The Petty Cups. Right. Particularly, they were playing a game against, I think, the Detroit Red Wings. Yep. And the, he was getting absolutely torched. Which happens Brown. sometimes. Right. But this is a... A goaltender on already on his way to becoming a Hall of Famer at that point, and a number one goaltender, one of the best in the league, and usually, much like a pitcher in baseball, if your goalie is getting lit up, you take them out of the game and you put in the backup just, just to save face at least. They've give okay, they've given up four goals in the first period. All right, just, just you take them out, take them out, put in the backup. You know, his night's over. Don't let him get more embarrassed than he already is. Waugh gave up nine goals. By the end of it, he was getting Bronx cheers from the crowd, which was not helpful at all. This is Montreal, by the way, so they're basically the New York Yankees of hockey, especially at that point. Um, And he was basically, like, he was, like, turning against. He was visibly upset. If it... And microphones weren't the way they are now. He could pick up everything, but um, he might have said a lot of really bad words in both English and French at that point. So as he's he finally gets pulled, by the way, but as he's leaving to go to the bat, his locker room, he's going to the locker room. He's not going to be on the ice. He he, right right next to the 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 Habs bench is there the team president. And he goes up to him and says, I'm not playing one more game for you guys ever again. So, and then, like, within dem- the next couple of days, he was traded to Colorado. Colorado. Which completely changed the face of that franchise. And led to them beating the Panthers in the Stanley Cup Finals. Which, bear in mind, this was the Avalanche's first season in Denver. Right. They had rec- That season was their first... Uh, since moving from Quebec, Quebec, Nordiques. The Quebec Nordiques. Now that team was already stacked by right. that point offensively, but they needed that one last piece, and he was it. Think of it like uh, I don't know, like the 03 Marlins. Think of it like when Justin Verlander went to the twenty seventeen Astros. <laughs> 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 uh, all jokes aside, um, it's basically okay. The 03 Marlins when they got Uga Thurbina as the closer. They and Punch Rodriguez. Closer. Well, that was before the season started. This is during the season. Mm. This is where th- they went from, like, they were going to be a, a good playoff team, mm-hmm. the Avalanche, to, oh, crap, they could win the damn thing right there and then. And they Which did. they did. And then they would win another one in 2001. But, also with Wad Helm. Right. 
And then you've got the older goalies, but the one I really want to get to is Dominic Koshik. Dominic Koshik. Who actually, I know I said there were three types of goalie styles. I lied. There's a fourth, <laughs> which is whatever the hell Dominic Koshik was. Right. This guy, he played most notably for the Buffalo Sabres and the Detroit Red Wings. Um, he spent basically his entire career, like his prime at least, uh, with the Buffalo Sabres. Um, actually, wasn't he with the Chicago Blackhawks as well? I that was his was, first team was the Blackhawks. Exactly. And that Blackhawks team was also stacked at goaltender. Ed Belfour was their was their goaltender and which funny ha- enough Hall of Famer. Right. Which funny enough in the 99 Stanley Cup, the two starting goaltenders were Ed Belfour for the Stars and right. Dominic Hoshik for the Sabres. The Blackhawks fans weeped for that series, but they were, <laughs> their suffering paid off later on. Anyways, um yeah, so he got so close to winning the cup in that series. Unfortunately, he didn't. But then he did basically the same thing that many players in baseball had done. He jumped, sh- like, going jumping ship to the New York Yankees because they, they gave him the best shot to win a championship. Hashik did the same thing. He went to the Detroit Red Wings, who were a dynasty. And they gave him the best shot to win a championship. And he did. He won the Stanley Cup with the Red Wings, which... Uh, okay, but at the, he deserved to be on the cup. It would be a travesty if Dominic Hasek had not been on the Stanley Cup. Right. Uh, think of it like Dan Marino. Uh, Charles Barkley. He would have been like that, basically. He would have been one of those guys on the SB Nation series. Uh, untitled. Untitled. Um, this is one of those guys that deserved uh, to be on the cup, and Goalies are very rarely considered the uh, name the MVP of the league. Right. Hashik was at least once, I think more than once. Goalies, that, once again, they're, they're akin to baseball player pitchers, to pitchers in baseball. You know, they have their own award, the Vesna, but occasionally one has such a good season that they win uh, the actual Hart Memorial Trophy, which is the MVP. Uh, the most recent was Carey Price for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, he won twice, uh, did Hasek, 96, 97, and 97, 98. Wow. Um, which, again, that's freaking ridiculous. So he is, if you want to know what a goaltender should look like, he is it. Now, he also won an Olympic gold medal. Right. And he was one of the first players in 98 to uh, – for NHL players to play in the Olympic tournament. Right, because 98 was the Nagano Olympics. Right. Um, and they actually won that one, mm-hmm. the Czech team. Uh, he's he's, he's uh, from the Czech Republic. BT Pardu Dubs. Biche. Yeah. So uh, he's not Canadian. Uh, <laughs> and you have to see his highlights um, because he, like, once, like, like Andrew said, you can't really describe his style because it's his own style. Like it's it's hybrid on I, hybrid on steroids. So. Is this WWE Raw too? Oh, first off, hi Heeb Sack. Um, second, this is uh, Day of Reckoning two for the. Well, it's not actually the game two, but it's a uh, uh, an emulator on the Switch. No. Oh, it's a Wii U emulator. Wii U, Wii U. Those graphics look great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Sort of, yeah. Better than the uh, 2K20, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> game. Yeah, I agree. I don't know. For some reason, the mid-2000s, at least in my opinion, were kind of the heyday of realistic graphics. Um... I don't know, for some reason, like, NCAA football looks better. It, I can't describe it. Uh, if you see it, you'll know what I'm talking about. There's a certain nostalgia to that era, especially because, I mean, when this game, I was in, I was in high school. Yeah, I was basically end of middle school through high school during this era of gaming. Mm-hmm. So 
which is probably my most prime gaming years. So that's why the, it holds a certain nostalgia for me. And once again, like you said, this is the era when graphics started to actually, y- they started to actually look like who they were supposed to look like. They weren't just big giant blobs of pixels and, 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 and uh, polygons like they mm-hmm. were for the N64 and the, and the PlayStation 1 and the Saturn, if you're one of the five people that own that, like me. Um, man, I love unpopular things. Like the Wii U <laughs> and the Sega Saturn and the Marlins. <laughs> um, by the way, we have to talk about our Lord and Savior later again, once mm-hmm. again. Uh, okay, so I'm going to put up a Dominic Hoshik highlight reel here. Dominic! I will mute the crap out of that because that was loud. But this guy right here, dear Lord. And this is from uh, Sportsnet BT Dubs. Um, Who will proceed to probably get this video taken down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. But here he is. Here's a, him stopping Yarmir Yager, another Hall of Famer. And he can't even believe it. A fellow Czech BT Dubs as well. Uh, here he is um, just absolutely laying out. <laughs> Stopping Pavel Bure, another Hall of Famer, elite goal scorer, and he can't believe it with that shot. Um, but how's his Samboni driving skills? You know what, BU? That is a very good question, and that is a a new stat that needs to be put up on Hockey Reference. It really th- that should be like the like the the war of the NHL stat line. <laughs> <laughs> of the advanced metrics. How are your Zamboni driving skills? Oh, yeah. That is some classic Hashik right there. And he he doesn't look like the biggest of guys either. He's not. I think he's only 5'11". Che- yeah, check his height and his weight because he wasn't... He was the most nimble of hockey goalies. And there's the, the Hashik style that you were talking about Andrew and that highlight right there. They actually named a save after him um, to be 5'11 is tall for goalies. He's average at best, right? Um, most goalies these days, at least within recent years are at least six feet tall. Now, there's been some su- successful small goal. T- I mean, John Van Beesbrook was like five, eight and he Again, was pretty damn any one of Vesna. So Again, it, it happens, but right. it's it's very uncommon. And he didn't need a trash can to learn how to <laughs> goaltend, unlike another short player for a certain baseball team out in East Texas. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, wow, this this guy right here, this that's him stopping Mario Lemieux, and these are just highlights of him stopping the greatest goal scorers of all time. And look, this is him fighting. Right here, that's oh boy, is that Garth Snow that he's fighting there? <laughs> Look at that! I think so. Yeah, for the Flyers, that is fun. It's fun seeing like all these going back to these highlights because a lot of these guys are executives now in the NHL, and it's fun seeing them back in the day when they were playing, just beating the crap out of each other. And there he is in the old Buffalo Sabers fantastic royal blue uniforms which they they really really should go back to oh and something i wanted to mention which is very interesting um i mean not including x i mean when you go to all professional hockey leagues hashik played for over 30 years oh including his time well he was on hc pardubice Mm -hmm. which is in which is his hometown team um then he was in the IHL with the Indianapolis Ice. Then he kind of jumped back and forth between the IHL and NHL. Then he was in the NHL forever. Um, and then he took a year off, then played one year again for the Pardubice, and then for Spartak Moscow in the KHL. And that was his last year in 2010-2011. Which, considering that his first year was 1980-1981, yeah. that's... I mean, with a couple of years off, he played for 30 years. That's, it's so which weird. Is ridiculous for a goaltender. It's so crazy how long, like, certain NHL players just last. It, 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 you would think they would be, you would think it would be shorter given the, the, 
type of game it is, but. But like Gordy Howe, yeah. Chris Chelios, Yarmir Yager, uh, Pavel Datsuk is still currently playing out uh, back in Russia. Yeah, and he's like forty something. So yeah, there. Here's a great quote. I, I'll wrap up Hashik by saying this. Here's a quote. Um, they say I am unorthodox. I flop around the ice like some kind of fish. I say, who cares as long as I stop the puck. Which that was his style was whatever it took to stop the puck. Oh, and one thing I should also mention, he was one of the last goaltenders. Actually, his teammate, Chris Osgood, was the last that used basically a player's helmet with a mask attached to it. Um, If you look at his mask, it basically looks like a player's helmet uh, just with a mask attached onto it. Uh, but I think they outlawed it at a certain point. Okay. So, yeah, that's uh, this is a good wrap. Oh, he played for the Senators? I did not know that either. Very briefly, wow. he did. I, I, <laughs> that's like uh, Mike Piazza playing for the Marlins. Dear Lord. Uh, all right. So, there and there he is lifting the cup. So, uh, we'll end it there. Right there. He him winning the Stanley Cup finally. All right, guys, so we are at the halfway point, so we know what that means. There's a word from our non-sponsors, people, places, things, and other what other stuff that we like, and not just EVE Online. It can be other things that we like that don't sponsor us, and that's what we're going to give a shout-out to. So uh, I did it last week. I did it pretty long last week. Uh, Charles, you weren't with us last week. I don't know if you want to give it a go to start I- us out. I would go into it. So we had kind of talked about it earlier, but you guys, I have been on the prowl for some new headphones, a gaming headset, because I had headphones I used for the gym, you know, my Sony Bluetooth wireless, which is beyond sexy. But (laughs) I look at myself, I said, you know, I'm in a chat playing Madden with my boys, playing Borderlands 3 with my buddy, talking to you guys on this fine, fine podcast, which you guys should always watch every you know, episode that we have. If you haven't seen prior episodes, go see some prior episodes. We got to 53 for a reason. There's 52 other ones out there. Some of them. I think, mo- cool I think it's stars. just stubbornness on our part. No, you know, we're we're like baby's kids. We don't die. We multiply. <laughs> so, I was like, all right, because I listen a little bit of our stuff that we do when I'm on to kind of see. Because I'm far away, I'm not in studio, so I'm trying to see how I sound connectivity-wise. I'm just trying to see if I sound clear and also just try to coach myself not to be too excited to be on the show talking about certain segments coming into it. But I've been wanting a gaming headset for a while. And I didn't want to be wireless because my laptop doesn't necessarily recognize wireless. And plus, I'm cheap, so I don't want to pay a lot of money. So I was looking on Amazon. I looked at some stuff, and then people were like, oh, you should get the HyperX. I'm like, yeah, the review. And here's the thing. I'll trust a bad review before I trust a good review. Yeah, because your subjectivity is the death of opinion, but also subjectivity is also the truth of opinion. Go into your philosophy class. We're not here for that. But I got myself a gaming headset, and I got to say, the MPOW 10, I believe it's called, MPOW E10 gaming headset that can go to both the PS4, the Xbox One, if you get the splitter. I don't have an Xbox One, so I don't worry about that. The Nintendo Switch, a PC, even using an adapter for your Android or iPhone. It's pretty dang good, you guys. Got a surround sound in there. I tested out with Red Dead Redemption 2. It was like I was a cowboy myself. And let me tell you something, boys. I love being a cowboy. Let me tell you, Pilgrim. I have this mic that's attached to it. So I asked the guys earlier if you could hear me. You said it sounded better than before. So I feel that people are going to be able to hear the good old ranting that is of Charles coming into it. And you know what? It was pretty darn affordable from another non so we got it off of Amazon. I got it for nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. So with tax, it came out about twenty one twenty nine. Oh, it's boy. probably back, you know, back off so for twenty six dollars. But it's comfy, it's ergonomic, it's good when I'm wearing glasses. And what I gotta tell you guys, it cups your entire ear, so it plays off, I guess, with the with the ears in sense of. I don't know if you've all have shot guns before, but yeah. if you ever had to wear like a ear protector, it kind of cups like that, as opposed to being like my old JVCs, which are more circles that only cover most of the year. So that was a little bit of a pain. I got to say, I like them. I really hope that they don't go on the wayside. I trust the reviews. I got the most updated one that came in from November 2019. And 
here's the thing about me when i'm hounding and when i'm searching i wait for a while to shoot my shot and boy i shot my shot and i gotta tell you mpow e10 gaming headset get yourself one of them they're pretty efficient there's a lot of variety wise mm -hmm. figure out what you want what i also like about this is that it has a foam comforter on the um on the top or on the connector I think where your head would that's would how much raise. you said you paid for this 18 bucks night 1999 oh, okay all righty i'm, yeah, I'm so actually we... sort of in the market for once i might uh because my mm -hmm. my little earbuds right now are dying I'm, I'm a big fan of it you know i mean it depends how you like your headphones do you want to be goofy like me who looks like he's working for nasa <laughs> um or about to go into the chair or do you want like little ones but for me i wanted the mic for the gaming i wanted the mic for when we do the show i think i am more clear i wanted some comfort in the headset because i wear glasses most of the time at least if i'm playing at nighttime and i didn't want my ear to sound like i had been punched by mike tyson a thousand times <laughs> over and this was my choice it's mpow because it's you know, very powerful. Uh, and that's my oh, promo yeah. code for it. Powerful. Mm -hmm. And I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan, guys. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, Andrew, do you have something up? I do. Okay. My, or wait, what's your uh, promo code there, Charles? You said power. Powerful. Oh, power. Power. Or, or power. Uh, my non sponsor for the week is the Max, Mo uh, Max Boost Durahold Series Car Phone Mount. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, super specific. Well, well, very specific, <laughs> actually. I got to write that down. Max Boost. Durahold Series Car Phone Mount. Okay. Yes. All righty. Okay. So, I, I, Francisco has not this particular model, but something like it in his car. Uh, it's a little thing that you stick your phone in. Uh, you can charge it, uh, yada, 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 hold your phone. And, you know, recently I was just kind of getting tired of, you know, looking down to my side, my, my eyes a lot off the road, uh, trying to, because I use maps a lot now getting to work because traffic is horrible. So I'm always trying to look for the best possible route to get there. So I finally just bit the bullet and said, you know what? I need to get me one of these car holder, uh, phone holder things. And so I did. It has been a beautiful, beautiful investment. Welcome to the club. I, I rarely am so happy with an investment like this, considering its price point, which is only $10. Uh, 